This presentation is the fourth of 10 presentations. Today, the readings for these coming weeks is from The Ignatian Adventure by Kevin O'Brien, pages 129 to 142. So you will be praying these weeks from these pages in the exercises. This is just a guide to help you pray and experience the exercises yourselves. A little review of the third presentation. It was about not so much sin, but sin as it relates to the mercy that is Jesus. Jesus, in a way, completes the exodus. For the Jewish people, the exodus, believe it or not, there's more written in the Hebrew scriptures about the exodus, the coming out of unfreedom, the coming out of slavery, out of Egypt. There is more written about that as the creation of the nation of God, the people of Israel, there's more written about that than about the creation of the whole universe in scripture. It's in Genesis, some of the Psalms, but for, for the real celebration, it was the creation of Israel as the people of God, the identity of the people of God that was more important. So they realized that they were saved and they knew from what they had been saved. What we prayed with at the foot of the cross in the first week of the exercises, what have I done? What am I doing? What do I want to do for Christ? Christ is the new and eternal exodus for us, saving us, identifying us, and what we prayed about was from what did, of me, from what of me, my participation in the world, from what did he save me? How is he savior? So that's, that's what we did, and we talked about Jesus as the main picture, keeping our focus on the God of mercy. And so we turn now in the exercises to what Ignatius would call the second week. And let me just say a word about, there are studies in theology the, the study of the Christos, of the Messiah, of the essence of Jesus. Christology is a study of Jesus. Exeges, exegesis is a study of scripture, the meaning of scripture. What we're doing in Ignatian prayer now, we're going to call it contemplation. Ignatian contemplation is different from uh, say, a, a type of spirituality of quiet and peaceful uh, c contemplation. The real meaning is the, the, the whole temple of God. What would I say there? What would I think there if I were in the presence of God? I'd be speechless. But this Ignatian contemplation is a bit different, and we'll talk now about that, because the second, third, and fourth weeks of the exercises have a lot to do with being very active in, in trying to understand not the external person of Jesus, not the theology of Jesus, but the interior person of Jesus, to get to know him. We have this phrase in English, yeah, I, I can get behind where you're coming from. No, that's not what we're doing in contemplation. We're not getting behind, we're getting within. The interior knowledge, the the uh, orientation, the interior loving orientation that was Jesus that he offers to us. And says, can you follow me, not just the way I walked, the way I, I did this or that. If you will do, if you have your interior aligned with the interior of Jesus, what you do is your personality. And that's a sacred reality, your personality. So it's the use of imagination, and this is difficult because we are, we are really people of intellect. Our, 
our minds, our logic, our reason, our memory. Well, there's this other God-given gift that is a little difficult to trust. We, we use it, but we don't trust it so much. We say, well, it's not real. Well, use of your imagination might be more real than you think. The, uh, you might know the Rorschach psychological test. They call it a projection, a projective technique. Or you might have heard the uh, house tree person where a person draws a little a house of some size, a tree, and a person. And a psychometrist can tell a lot that you didn't even know you were saying by uh, interpreting the ink blots. And there's a high correlation between that they've established between those projections. Projection is going out. I, th I throw it into, I throw myself into it. And I am revealed in ways that I might not know. You, you might not know how your home or your room or your car or your office or your kitchen, how those are projections of you. You know, if you are extremely neat, need a lot of order, you're projecting something from inside, outside. And some people are very neat and some people are, shall we say, eh, not so neat. They, they hang clothes on the floor they pile up books and papers. They know where things are, it just looks messy. They're projecting. You are, you are projecting all the time. I am projecting even as I speak. The, the clothes I wear, how I walk, everything is project, projection and people know you by what you do. They know something of you, not all of you. Well, we're watching Jesus, his exterior because he's projecting his interior and we want to to let that into ourselves. And so we, uh, we are, you know, we are influenced quite a bit, as you know, by the people whom we meet. And so a maxim for today might be that this God of aggressiveness, this, this God who has come out of mystery, uh, comes into history. Mystery, divine mystery comes into history, comes into my history. Now, the first maxim for today is God is always constantly seeking us. And this sounds similar to the one that God is aggressive. God is always on the prowl. Well, God is seeking us. What we do is seek a place to be found, which is what? My truth, and we talked about that last presentation, that, that this God can find me. Remember we talked about Bartimaeus in Mark 10, 46. What if, what if Bartimaeus, Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus doesn't tell him the truth. He says, Lord, that I may hear better, and Jesus can't meet him. Not his truth. He can meet his false truth and say, Bartimaeus, you can hear very well. You just heard me. You just can't see very well. That's your truth. Accept your truth. And Bartimaeus says, okay. So that what we have to do is to catch up with ourselves, to be honest with ourselves. Along with that, and this is a, a difficult one to live. It's easy to say it's cute. All interruptions are invitations. Can you imagine that? That all the interruptions, the phone calls, people at the door, car breaking down, all interruptions of your schedule, of your expectations, are invitations to something new, something different, something about you perhaps. So to live the interior of Jesus Jesus allowed all interruptions to be invitations for his seeking. And what we'll see in the second week, especially in your prayer is coming weeks, is how God interrupts people, and we'll look at that. 
The second little maxim is very important to Ignatius. Love is shown by us in actions more than in feelings and in words. In deeds, in doing something, in projecting the interior to the exterior. That's the way God worked, coming into history, in the covenants, in the prophets, and ultimately in the person of Jesus and the sending of the Spirit, actions. Now what Ignatius would like us to do is to get to a scene with all of our senses, really be there and pray with where I am. I have had people, for instance, praying the uh, Annunciation, you know, the angel coming to Mary. And the first time they prayed, they were way out on the road and Mary and the angel were inside. And this person told me, you know, that's the way I relate with God. I like God at a comfortable distance. I like God knowing me, but not completely. And as a matter of fact, I don't really like knowing myself completely. Well, that person, little by little, from one time to another, got so close that Mary invited that person in for tea. Intimacy is what we're after, not knowledge. All the knowledge will come. We will learn about ourselves. Here's a poem written by Tagore, as I say, a poet from India. But listen to it in terms of the angel coming to Mary. You came down from your throne and stood at my cottage door. I was singing all alone in a corner and the melody caught your ear. You came and stood at my cottage door. Masters are many in your hall and songs are sung there at all hours. But the simple carol of this novice struck at your love. One plaintive little strain mingled with the great music of the world. And with a flower for a prize, you came down and stopped at my cottage door. Ignatius first opens the second week of the exercises with the Trinity looking down from heaven at the world. Now there is a verse in Isaiah 63 where the prophet says, oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down at your presence, the mountains would melt. Oh, that you would come down and stand by our cottage door. Well, that's what Ignatius says. God looks down and he sees people killing each other, people being born, people stealing and people sharing the complexity, the mixedness of humanity. And they decide our inside must come out. Love is shown in deeds, not words and feelings. Love is shown in projections into the incarnate reality of humanity. And so they decide to send, send, A word, a gesture, a person, real, human, to accompany human 
beings in their reality, in their truth, in their killing and in their being born, in their jealousies, arrogance. We will, in you, Jesus, walk among and re-identify our people again. How are we going to do that? Let's go among them in their poverty, in their simplicity. And so the angel comes in Luke 1, and you will pray with that. I don't have to help you there. You just, just get there, though. Don't be afraid. You will want to have ideas. Yes, ideas are good. I have one now and then myself. But pictures, say a thousand words. And listen, we, we listen to their words. What are they saying to each other? How is the angel speaking? What does it feel like to me? Where am I? Is this too much for me? I can't understand it, so it must not be real. No, it's real, and it's asking us to be more real. That's the thing about Ignatian contemplation that I become more real than I can handle at times. I often, and maybe I've said this, I often say, Jesus, give me something new. Give me a new me. Every time I use Ignatian contemplation, it's always me. So we have the Annunciation that you will be praying with, the Visitation, the Nativity. Spend a long time, not with Christmas, but with nativity, earth, smells, touches, shepherds, magi. Spend a lot of time there, a lot of time doing nothing, a lot of time letting God project so that I will see and hear who God says God is and who God is trying to help me see who I am. I will come in contact with a truth then. We will always want to go on. I remember fishing with my brother and his young son, and we were catching fish, and he said, let's go over there. So why would you want to go there? We're catching good fish. Yeah, but there might be better ones over there. Of course, we always want more, better, bigger. No, stay where you are. Wherever you are, catching fish, picking fruit, I will see his interior speaking to my interior, and I'm asked not to be afraid. So we pray that his interiority slowly transforms mine. You know, it's a reality that we are mainly changed, not by the people whom we meet, but the people who meet us. The major changes in a person's life are because of encounter. Not because of ideas and principles and logic, but by encounter. Interiors meeting. And it might be a great way to review who am I because of the people whom I have allowed to meet me, to really get to me, to really create me, as we have said. So Jesus is mystery entering history into my history that I might become part of his. Excuse me. So we pray uh, gently and, and, and we might even speak with those people and they speak to us. I often, especially with men, want to know How are you with the intimacy of Mary giving birth, of the quietness? I remember my making the exercises the second time, and in my imagination, there was the manger and the baby Jesus and nobody else. So I I picked up Jesus, and Mary came around the corner, and I felt ashamed. I, I shouldn't be doing this. So I was going to put the baby down, and she said, wait. He is born for you. 
She said that. Did my imagination say it? Maybe. But she said it. I heard her say it. That's a reality. That's a truth. He was born for me. And that has stuck with me. So we are changed by the people whom we have allowed to meet us. We have met people that really didn't meet us. It was all elevator conversation. But there are people, and by their knowledge of me, help God create me, give me more of me. No condemnation, no judgment, receptivity. Their receptivity of me asking me to receive me. God's acceptance of me asking me to accept me. God's gratitude for me moving me to be more grateful. And to the degree to which I am grateful, I will be generous. Generosity is built on gratitude. If I am not grateful, I will not share it. I will only share that which I like. I might buy, buy you a box of candy. I will never buy you a box of licorice because I don't like licorice. Why you do? Eh. I want a reflection of me knowing you. I know, I know you like chocolate too. So in a sense, the gift, remember I said that the giver is always saying something about the giver. God is always saying something about God and always saying something about me and something about us. And to receive Jesus, I have to receive what God is saying about God, what God is saying about me. Sometimes that's hard. It's a, it's a conflict between what I say I am and believing what God says. So I walk with him, I, I walk with Joseph and his confusion. I walk with the poverty of the shepherds and they are the first congregation that come to worship at the altar of the manger. Sure, where are you? Are you with the shepherds? Always pray where you are. Where am I? Maybe, and I have done this, maybe I pray with, I don't go with the shepherds, I stay back. I don't want to be fooled by angels. No, stay here with the sheep. They're real. That was my truth at that time. I didn't want to be fooled. So that's Ignatian contemplation, and I'd like you to pray with what O'Brien says there, all the helps he gives you. Come back to this now and then. I want to close with a more difficult poem. <laughs> it's more difficult, of course, because it's written by a Jesuit, Jared Manley Hopkins. <clears throat> and I'll just tell the first part. You, you will be able to read it. It's called, As Kingfishers Catch Fire. Uh, as a kingfisher bird, when it spreads its wings, its right, bright red chest looks like fire. And he says, each bell has one note. And each um, guitar string has one frequency, one sound. And if you drop a stone in a well, it, it rings concentrically. And then he says, everything does one thing and the same. Everything does itself. It flings out broad its name, crying, what I do is me, for that I came. And that's true. Everything has its its essence and its accidents. Everything deals out that being indoors. Each one dwells, and it uses a pronoun here as a verb, it selves. Everything selves. Everything. It can only be what it is. Goes itself. What I do is me, for that I came. But then this is the part I'd like you to pray with, the last part. I say more, the just man, woman, justices. Justices. Is that gratitude? Yes. The just person lives gratefully, he'd say. Keeps grace that keeps all his goings graces. What a beautiful line, pray with that. What a great line, that all his graces 
were displayed in his goings, that our, our goings are graces. And this is the famous ending. This grateful person, this person of the exercises, he or she acts in God's eye what in God's eye he is, she is. Christ. So instead of selving the interior person, Christ's, he takes the name for the Messiah and uses it as a verb. Acts in God's eye, what in God's eye? Christ. And then the famous line, memorize this. For Christ plays in 10,000 places, lovely in limbs and lovely in eyes, not his, to the Father, through the features of men's faces. We keep grace to keep all our going graces. We, Christ, we act in God's eye, what in God's eye we are. For Christ plays through us, not his, but our faces, our hands, our lives. Christ plays through us, plays to the Father, through the features of our faces. 